for the intense whirlwind of events that took place in Paris. We did it for Academy. Love is difficult, man. Oh. I came back to Romania and I was in a need of a break. There's no place I'd rather be. But unintendedly, my need of relaxation turned into a new adventure. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! In a 500 year old monastery in Transylvania. In this episode, you'll find out how I managed to secure the VIP treatment at the monastery, how I became besties with the nuns, how I put my life in danger, met new people, and how the nuns took care of my dating life. in Transylvania. Well, you'd be surprised. I called them and I was like, Hi, Doamna Juta. I want to come and stay at your lovely monastery. And this nun, she was like, Um, this is not a hotel. And she hanged up on me. Now, after receiving such a clear no, how did I convince the nuns to come and let me stay at the monastery? Well, nepotism. In this pop culture world, I don't have any famous family connections. But when it comes to the Christian Orthodox world, I do have a celebrity in my family. My mom. She is one of the biggest icon painters in the world. She is like a Picasso of the Christian Orthodox art. Besides icons, my mom restores and paints old historical monuments and churches. That is why I spent many summers as a kid in different monasteries where my mom worked. And from all the monasteries I have stayed at, this one has always been my favorite. Getting to the monastery was no easy business. I needed to get into a car, then into a bus. Okay, I gotta get my trolley and put it in there. This is part of the experience. <laughs> then into another bus. We embark on a crazy ride with this little bus. Then I needed to hitchhike to the monastery. I probably have to sell a kidney to get there with a the taxi and I'm not gonna do that. And I talked with this lady and she said, you know what, we have this guy, Georgi. Okay, here he is. But we only appreciate the things we invest effort into. The time is 11.51. So eventually, there I was. I have successfully made it to Manastira di Trunem. I cannot believe this. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Look at this place. This is my favorite place on earth. Or top three. Top three favorite places on earth. And the best part about it, can you hear this? Yeah, it's nothing. It's silence. Settling in the monastery brought back so many memories. particular smell that I cannot find anywhere else. Of course, when I arrived, all of the nuns started to ask me about my mother. The second thing the nuns asked me about managed to trigger insecurity in me. I was a little bit nervous of my interaction with the nuns because as kids, I felt like the nuns loved my brother more and I was kind of the sister of my brother. Or maybe this is maybe just something that I remember wrong. And I was like, oh, maybe they're gonna be like, where is your brother? And I'm gonna be left aside. So when I came here, uh, initially there was that sort of, so how's Stefan doing? Where is your brother? How is he? <laughs> And I was a little bit like, oh, there we go. They don't care about me. They just want to see my charming brother. But then I said, you know what? This is just a very old <laughs> mindset that I used to have and an old fear. Let me just be myself, bring my whole personality into 
conversation let me lead with the, my best energy as I you know do and I did that and turns out they brought their best energy and I've had such a good time with the nuns to the point where I feel like I'm Domnul Goye of the monastery. I have like, I'm the kid of the monastery and all these nuns are just so excited for me to be here. I feel so welcomed here now. With this new approach in mind, I proceeded to live my week at the monastery. Nuns are showing me pictures with me when I was a kid. Ia mai cu să văd, ia să văd. Dar poți să o pozezi cu ăsta, cu un... Sau țipla asta, sau trebuie scoasă, nu țiplă. Stați puțin. Să-i trebuie să spune la Ștefama că vreau să-l văd. Îi spun și arăt și poza asta. Fai, ce drăguț! Stați, unde era? Și unde era locul ăsta? Hai să-ți arăt aici. Și aici a făcut și Ștefibi pe fereastră. Așa, ai mă... Aici e! Ai, ăsta e cu tom, aici e masa care e... <laughs> Let me just say that my brother Stefan has always had his way with the ladies, and the nuns were no exception. I love the nuns from this monastery. They have a very direct and straightforward way of communicating. They manage to insult you and compliment you at the same time. I very soon entered into the normal rhythm of life in the monastery. is 724 and I'm going up the hill to do a morning exercise routine while the nuns are praying they're doing their morning prayers and I'm gonna do mine this is a building that was built in the 17th century and by Preda Brancovano I'm just casually passing by it Where I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna go to the old church. Basically this whole monastery is built around this old church. And the story goes that this guy found the Mother Mary icon in a tree. And then from that huge tree, he built this tiny little church. This is such a magical tree. The nuns are praying over there. The only moment of the day where I would get all of the nuns together was at lunch. After eating, I had the rest of the day to explore the grounds of the monastery by myself. Most monasteries have one courtyard, one flower or two maximum, and a church. But this monastery is a playground. I'm going to show you all the features, why this is such an amazing place to be. When you walk in the monastery, you have the Weeping Willow entrance. You have this long road that takes you to the actual monastery with Weeping Willows, just like in Harry Potter. And on this very road, on this very road, I first learned how to bike. Next to the Weeping Willows, on the right, we have the old water mill. This place, if you just walk here, right here, if you just walk here and cross, you get to the place where everything started. Water used to be here and I would just swim with my brother. I had a conversation recently with Damon in Paris about getting older and as we get older, because we get in this repetitive state of we sleep at the same time we tend to eat the same things we have the same thought patterns our days become repetitive compared to our childhood we can remember our childhood and we think oh my god my childhood was so long like there were so many things that have happened in those years but after you're 20 like your life kind of 
starts speeding up to a point where people that are in their 50s, 60s, months can go by and they're like, wait, what just happened? Like, it was Christmas yesterday and what, what am I doing today? And something that me and Damon were talking about was the fact that in order to slow time down as an adult, you need to get into that child, into that kid-like mentality where you try new things and where you put yourself in situations that challenge you again. That is my intention, me being here. I want to wake up in a different spot. I want to be able to smell different things that I normally smell in my apartment in Bucharest and my daily routine. I want to stay with the nuns and hear their stories. I want to be in an environment that is so different than what I usually live. I want to explore, I want to run, I want to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning and watch the sunrise. I want to stay in the middle of the night and look at the stars. I want to do these things because I normally don't do them. And this is living. In episode two, I expressed my love for Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton must have dus irremediabil. Now it was time for me to prove it. I'm living my Buster Keaton moment right now. Do you know the Buster Keaton water mill? What am I doing? It's happening. Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god, it's moving. Oh my fucking god. I thought this was not going to move. This could end up so bad. Um, either I jump over there. What do I do? Okay, what do I actually do? Buster Keaton, you could do it, so can I. I need to spin it in that way. Woo! As you walk from the Weeping Willows and you get to the monastery part, there are two roads. You can take the blue pill or you can take the red pill. The blue pill takes you to the monastery, but the red pill takes you in a direction of mystery. And we're gonna take the red pill. Some of the nuns live over there. The cows are over there. And over here, you have the hay shed. This is where I wanna be. This smell. Over here, another dream of mine. Karuza. Coming to this monastery was one of my fantasies. Another one of my fantasies is going to a village where they have Harutsa with horses and I can just ride into the sunset with it. Animale. Animale. Pentru mancari animali. And if you keep walking down this road, we're going to the river. It's a modest river, but a modest river is still a river. A modest woman is still a woman. <laughs> If my brother was here, we could build a castle from rocks on this river. Stefan, where are you? Oh, I still have hay in my hair. After a few days, I was on a number calling basis with some of the nuns. <laughs> mm -hmm. We were basically besties. I went to visit her in her painting workshop. Yes, I tried to imagine which parts of my YouTube episodes the nuns enjoyed the most. And this concert was exactly proving my point. <laughs> what I had in front of my eyes was a religious manifestation in full bloom. We just don't call it that way. What people experienced in the catacombs when Christianity was just emerging hasn't died. 
it exists today, the modern version of this, is a concert. Later that day, the nun took me with her to my favorite place in the whole monastery. Turnul, acest turn e locul meu preferat de din monastire. Propodnita? Da. Merge, 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 merge și intră acolo. Pac! E secretă! The old tower bell is the highest place in the monastery and you can see the whole land from up there. As a kid, I used to swing on the rope of this 300-year-old church bell. And because I was so skinny and the bell was so heavy, the bell would not ring. This activity had to stop when I grew older and gained some weight. And while swinging, the bell rang and woke up the whole monastery at a very inappropriate hour and all of the nuns started to panic. As she was playing the orthodox percussion, I waited for the moment when she will stop and she will invite me to ring the bells together. I have lived some pretty majestic moments in my short life on earth, but nothing compares to ringing these 300 iron bells that can be heard from miles away and that lift you up in the air at the end. This whole ritual would take place two times per day and would be an invitation for all the nuns to come to the church and pray together. I would take part in these services sometimes. Some of the nuns were really assertive with their singing. They were like the Andrew Tate of Orthodox chanting. Even though I was now very close to God, I did not forget about my friends. I kept them close as well. I was wearing the most appropriate see-through top that my friend Damon gave me in Paris. Oh, oh, it's nice. I love these infants shirtless. When I would feel like all of these spiritual endeavors were too much for me, I would go and visit the simplest of beings. The animals. Hello ladies. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the si Now put your wings up. Up da, da 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 Ladies, if you're looking for a rooster, I can provide you one. I'm a chicken P I M P. I don't know what you heard about me. Wow. Oh, why are you so afraid, little duck? I didn't know ducks have blue eyes. Hey! Here I am with the cows. Și le mulgeți pe toate acum? Nu, n-am decât una, două, trei. Trei. Patru, cinci, șase și cu asta așa. Ce faci, măi, făcuță? Ce mare ești! Ești uriașă! I want my capacity to love to be as big and voluptuous as you are, my beautiful cow. What is your name? Pamela? I joined another group of nuns to their quest in the local village. They were going to the lady that took care of the monastery cows for 50 years. <laughs> the reason for their visit was to convince her to upgrade her life with a new wardrobe. <laughs> This was no easy task. <laughs> Tanti Riza was very emotional and even though her old wardrobe was in shambles, she insisted on keeping it. It really made me think about what things in my life could use an upgrade, but I am too blinded by my attachment to them that I am not willing to change. Meeting Tanti Rita made me realize that 
There will be no need to watch any Kusturica movies or Borat for a while because I was living them. Take a fight your poison. Ce ăla e șifonier, Mărița, să vezi tu ce ți-e de dragă e. Nu mă mă dragă, nu mă dragă, că eu ca mâine mori. I will never forget who Tanti Rița slept in bed with every night. This chicken. Hello everybody and welcome to rural Romania. After all the socializing, I was ready for some me time. This is where I want to be. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm a different person since I came to this monastery three days ago. Because I have 20 new bites of mosquitoes and fleas combined. Fleas are everywhere. These fleas love me. Like they have been biting my naked body <laughs> all night. Long. They have been making sweet love to me without my consent. Am I here for religious purposes? Am I here because this is a monastery and I want to pray to the gods? No. I do have, though, a past with religion because from the ages of 18 to 22, I had uh, my nun phase, which resulted in me at 21 giving all of my things away and wanting to enroll in a monastery in France. That didn't happen. And uh, right now I'm in a I'm in a break from religion, but I did have deep intercourse with religion, and uh, that left I think one of the biggest marks on me. And I'm really excited to explore and go in depth on this subject. But the reason I'm here, the reason I'm at this very monastery, is not because I'm trying to find God. It's just because I want to feel like the six-year-old kid that used to run on the grounds of this monastery and used to smell the nature and be so happy with so little. As my flea infestation was getting worse and worse, I went to Maika Varvara and asked her for professional help. Okay. I witnessed the day before how she would take care of her 15 cats and unflee them manually. My Varvara, I, I just cannot with her. Maika Varvara is the quintessence of being unapologetically oneself. Okay, and now I've never been here before. Soluție pentru purici. I like what my life has become. One day I'm in Paris. The next day I'm in a monastery looking for anti-flea solution and I found it. I'm one flea bag at the moment. Hi. This is as close as I can get to being Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I don't know if my life is like a movie. The way this place smells. Or I live it in a way that it feels like one, but this monastery at night was otherworldly. I just am alive right here. I go through life and I don't feel alive all of the time. Sometimes I forget that I'm living. But this type of smell, oh my god, it smells a little bit like burnt wood. This is such a goddamn ghost place. You are away from everything. So you can basically be lying in the middle of the street, right here. Yes, yes, please. Can I be here forever? Hi, hello, my name is Ioana Petrescu and I live a very minimalist life. This white line on the road is everything that I own. You don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Okay, a car is coming, a car is coming. <laughs> He's gone away into the forest to find out who he really is. Because it's very difficult to find that out while you're with other people. And the reason is that other people are busy all the time telling you who you are. But if you want to find out who you are, you almost have to go off by yourself. Go into the forest and stop talking, even stop thinking words. And be absolutely alone. Listen to the great silences. <laughs> 